In 1904, the New York Fire Department arrives at the Manhattan Adventurers Society because of a room that is expelling a lot of smoke. However, when the firefighters arrive, the smoke is sucked back inside. One of the men touches the door and his hand begins to freeze, so his partners have to pull him away. Then the firefighters break the door down and are shocked to find dozens of frozen corpses and ice everywhere while an unknown language plays from a phonograph. Among the ice spikes, a mysterious figure in armor holds an orb containing an ancient evil. When the firefighters try to grab it, the orb opens and causes all the bodies to shatter. Inside the orb, a pair of eyes glow with malice. In the present, Callie, her boyfriend Gary, and her children Phoebe and Trevor have moved to New York from Somerville to become full-time Ghostbusters. Callie is the daughter of one of the old Ghostbuster team members, so it's become a family business. A terrifying ghost has escaped from the sewer and is causing trouble all over Manhattan, so the new team starts chasing it in the car as it hits other vehicles with manhole covers. A special seat is pulled out so Phoebe can shoot the proton blaster at the ghost, but the driving causes her to miss a lot and her shots end up damaging various buildings. Once they're close enough, Trevor releases a remote controlled trap, but this is still not enough to catch the ghost so a drone trap comes out next. Callie guides the drone toward the ghost and successfully captures it. The family celebrates and Gary gets distracted, causing him to lose control of the car and crash into a rack of city bicycles. People on the streets record everything with their phones and soon the team appears on the news. The damage they've caused is seen in a negative light, so Mayor Peck calls the team to his office to scold them for what they've done to the city and for bringing along Phoebe, who is still a minor. Afterward the team returns to headquarters, which is the same office the old Ghostbusters used to work in. Remembering the mayor's threats, Callie and Gary decide that Phoebe should have a normal life and is kicked out of the team. Phoebe doesn't take it well but her complaints are ignored. Then Gary and Callie put the ghost in their containment unit, which takes more effort than usual but they don't know why. Thankfully the light turns green, meaning the ghost is successfully contained. Meanwhile Ray from the old Ghostbuster team and podcast have an online show. Using an horoscope, they measure the spiritual energy of everyday objects to try to find a connection to the afterlife. A woman brings a watch from her late husband, but Ray gets no readings and podcast just smashes it with a hammer. Later when Phoebe comes to visit, she discovers that their shop has a bunch of little entities known as marshmallow men running around his room. She thinks they're cute, but podcast smashes one down as he explains they're a plague. Suddenly Nadim enters the shop and the mere sight of his box sends all the marshmallow man running to hide in fear. The box has a bunch of family antiques that Nadim wants to sell and Ray is immediately curious about the orb, noticing the glyphs on it. He uses the horoscope on it, but the energy emitted by the orb causes a surge that breaks the device and triggers a short earthquake. A freezing energy can be seen moving through the street and eventually hitting the wall with the ghost container. Ray immediately buys the orb and Nadim leaves with the money as fast as possible, noticing the flame on a food cart outside suddenly growing larger than usual for no reason. At the Ghostbusters headquarters, Gary finds the damage on the wall and calls Janine, the secretary of the previous team, who promises to send an expert to check on this. Upstairs, Trevor notices some green slime leaking through the roof and goes to the attic to investigate. He finds a pile of empty food packaging that moves as something naps underneath, so he takes a closer look and is shocked to find Slimer, who jumps out, flies through Trevor, and escapes by passing through the wall. Sometime later, the team gets a ghost alert and leaves on a mission, but they refuse to take Phoebe. She ends up going to the park to play chess by herself, but suddenly the pieces start moving on their own. A ghost named Melody appears, and her shape looks flamey because she died in a fire. While they play, Melody admits she has very low chances of crossing over because she has unfinished business. The next day, parabiologist Lars comes to check on the damaged wall, and when the unit shakes they confirm the ghosts are trying to get out. Former Ghostbuster Winston brings the original design of the containment unit, which was created by Callie's late father. They conclude the unit is running out of space after 40 years of compiling spiritual waste. Winston also informs them that the blast that caused the earthquake created a rift which could potentially act as a gateway to the other side. Since obviously this building won't hold for long, Winston takes the team to a secret lab where he's keeping the paranormal research center. All kinds of scientists gather here to study supernatural phenomena. Trevor gets to reunite with his friend Lucky, who is working there as well. Whenever Ray finds an item with supernatural energy, he sends it to the lab, and Lars puts them in a machine that separates the ghost from the object. Using the original design as a guide, they've also built a bigger container unit, so they'll have to start moving the ghost from headquarters by bringing them with traps. Not all the ghosts are kept in the unit, some of them are in special cells for further study. Phoebe is freaked out by a skull while Gary and Kelly step back when a ghost pukes at the glass. There's also a possessor that likes jumping from device to device. Later in the evening, the team gets another mission and leaves without Phoebe again. At that moment a second emergency call comes in, so Phoebe and Podcast go to take care of it behind the adults' backs. They make it to a restaurant and discover the ghost is Melody, so Phoebe doesn't dare to shoot. Melody immediately escapes and Phoebe reacts too late, causing the windows to break. Meanwhile in the lab, Lars and Lucky are working with Ray's objects. When it's the orb's turn, 
all the ghosts in the cells feel rather disturbed. The machine fails to remove the spirit and suddenly the lab goes through a power surge. Some cell windows break and the ghosts start moving to escape, but at that moment Lars fixes the power and everything goes back to normal. Then he grabs the orb, only for his hand to start freezing. Lars drops the orb right before he can lose his arm. Moments later, Melody visits Phoebe in her room. Phoebe shows her around and Melody almost touches the containment unit but stops just in time. Melody also keeps playing with some matches, so Phoebe explains that's the object that's anchoring her to this world. It turns out these matches started the fire that killed her family. In the lab, the orb sends out a freezing blast that hits the unit again and shuts down the power in the city. The blast moves near Melody, who says she's working as fast as she can but sounds hesitant about having to use Phoebe for the plan. The following day, Trevor puts down a trap in the attic and covers it with junk food before hiding with a proton blaster ready. Slimer comes out to eat, but before Trevor can shoot it, another earthquake hits the city. The team rushes to the containment unit and finds a huge hole in the wall plus frost all over the place. Afterward the team returns to the lab and learns that the orb is also freezing. Grabbing it with a tool, Lars shows the orb to the marshmallow men, who feel so attracted to it that they splash against the window. Apparently the orb can mind control ghosts, it also freezes certain devices when it gets too close. Desperate for more information, Lucky, Trevor, and Lars go to see Nadim, who shows them his grandmother's special room. There are lots of antiques there, like some weird horns and the armor from the beginning. Lars realizes that everything in the room is made out of brass, which can trap ghosts. When the trio uses the horoscope on Nadim, there's a strong reaction, so they bring him to the lab with them. After connecting Nadim to a machine, former Ghostbuster Peter starts asking some strange questions. Suddenly he throws a pen at Nadim, who gets angry and causes a nearby flame to grow bigger. As an argument ensues and Peter throws more pens, Nadim's anger grows and so does the flame, which means he has the power to manipulate fire. In the meantime, Podcast is reviewing the video he took at the lab and discovers a weird ancient language coming out of the orb. He, Phoebe, and Ray decide to consult an expert and leave on Ray's old bike. They go to the New York Public Library and talk to a scientist who translates the words from the video while showing them a carving on an old book. Centuries earlier, a power-mad king sought help from a powerful entity called Garaka, who had his own plans to bring a new ice age. Nadim's ancestors were a team known as the Fire Masters, who used their abilities to imprison Garaka in the orb and steal the horns that gave him his power. If Garaka becomes free, New York would experience the death chill, which kills people with a cold formed from chilling fear. The scientist also shows them some wax cylinders with old recordings, including one from the Manhattan Adventurers Society. That group used to love stealing relics and many years ago tried opening the orb, which killed them all. The group hears the recording and finds the same words from the video. Suddenly the cylinder starts shaking and jumps out of the machine to land in a trash bag, which starts going crazy around the library. The team starts following it and when Ray walks among the shelves, he's blocked by the same library ghost from the 80s. The group follows the ghost outside and finds it resting on the lion statue. Ray tries to reach for it, but suddenly the lion starts moving because the ghost left the bag to possess the statue instead. As people run away in panic, Phoebe gets a proton blaster from the bike and shoots the lion, causing it to explode. Moments later, Peck announces that he's shutting down the Ghostbusters, which has been his wish since the old days. Phoebe tries to protest, but Peck says it's either this or going to prison. In the evening, the team returns to headquarters and discovers all their equipment has been taken by the police. While Phoebe argues with her parents, Ray shows Nadim the damage on the containment room and tells him he's the next firemaster, so he needs to start training to save the world. The first exercise is to move a flame from a lighter to a candle. As Nadim moves his hand, the flame moves as well, but it doesn't do much yet. Meanwhile Phoebe goes to the park again and meets with Melody. The girls chat and get to bond, so Phoebe admits she would like to be a ghost, giving her an idea. They go to the lab and Phoebe enters the machine, then Melody activates it to temporarily separate her soul from her body. The procedure works, but Melody apologizes and looks sad. It turns out she's working for Garaka, who can't control living beings, only ghosts. Since he needs a living person to open the orb, now he can control Phoebe's ghost to make her say the words. The ghost is still connected to her body, so it repeats the words as well and the orb begins opening while Melody explains she had to do this because it's her only chance to see her family again. Soon the orb comes apart and a deep darkness takes over the room. Garaka appears and says he'll destroy the world while his power forces Phoebe's ghost back into her body. At that moment Lucky shows up and tries to fire a proton blast at Garaka, but he quickly freezes and shatters the stream before disappearing. While the rest of the team comes to free Phoebe, Garaka enters the shop in Nadim's building and freezes the clerk to death. Then he makes his way to Nadim's apartment, where he retrieves his horns. As soon as he puts them on, he regains his true form and all his power. Soon a dark cloud appears over the city and starts freezing the whole area, causing ice spikes to appear to destroy property and kill people without mercy. 
Both the old and new teams gather at headquarters to discuss ideas and Nadim shows off his training, but he still can only do the basics. Fortunately Lars has some equipment in his van, so the team starts getting ready to fight while Lucky points out their weapons won't be enough considering what happened in the lab. Phoebe remembers that brass can trap ghosts and the orb was made with it, so she starts melting some brass to reinforce her blaster. On the roof, Trevor and Lucky see a tricycle rolling on its own on the deserted street, so they guess it's the possessor ghost that escaped from the lab and rush back inside. As the storm outside gets worse, the tricycle hits the door, causing it to blow out of its hinges. A red light that represents the possessor hits the Ghostbusters sign and makes it fall before going inside and possessing the car. The vehicle moves back and everyone jumps out of the way just in time. Lars goes into another room because he heard a noise, but it's one of the little ghosts from the lab, who shoots goo at his face. The red light soon leaves the car by possessing a paper plane, then it jumps into Lucky's proton pack. It raises the blaster and tries to shoot Trevor, but Gary pushes him away and Nadim uses his power to redirect the blast out the window. Podcast smashes the pack with his hammer and the ghost jumps out to possess a pizza, only to end up devoured by Slimer. At that moment the ice starts covering the headquarters building. Phoebe goes to the unit room and finds Melody, who swears she didn't want to hurt anybody and only wanted to see her family. Furious, Phoebe makes her see that nobody can help her move on. Melody has to find it in herself. Then Garaka finally arrives and blocks the front door with more ice spikes. As the building starts shaking and coming apart, the Ghostbusters shoot all their proton blasters at the same time, but Garaka freezes all the streams in seconds. Suddenly Nadim appears wearing the Firemaster armor and tries to use the lighter to summon a flame, but it's not working because he used all the fluid in training. Garaka grabs the lighter and destroys it before shooting a blast that creates a chasm in the floor and traps everyone with more ice spikes. Then Garaka says an incantation to release all the ghosts from the unit, which makes a huge energy blast to shoot up into the sky. All the ghosts from the unit escape and start terrorizing the city, but Phoebe can't see Melody anymore. She rushes upstairs and fires her blaster at Garaka, who can't freeze this reinforced energy so he shoots Frost at Phoebe instead. The girl instantly freezes and Garaka tries to extract her soul, but at that moment Melody reappears and lights her last match. Now Nadim can create a fireball that he shoots at Garaka, and the strong heat melts the ice in the room, releasing everyone. Phoebe shoots her blaster again and has trouble standing still with so much power in her hands, so her family helps her hold it. While the combined effort of the reinforced blast and Nadim's fireball overpower Garaka, Podcast rushes to the car and releases the drone trap. However the Marshmallow men have also escaped the lab and mess with him, causing him to lose control of the trap and allowing Garaka to knock it down. The older Ghostbusters realize that since Garaka released all the ghosts, the containment unit is now empty. They run to the basement to activate it, and thanks to everyone working together, Garaka is dragged into the unit and the light turns green, confirming the bad guy has been successfully sealed. Afterward Melody gives Phoebe her matchbox and says goodbye before finally moving on. The team comes out and discovers all the ice has melted. Perk appears to try to scold them again, but all the locals are showing their support and Perk has no choice but to play along, allowing the Ghostbusters to function for now. Now all the ghosts that Garaka released are loose in the city, so the team jumps back into action to start cleaning. On their way out, Phoebe calls Gary dad for the first time. Some time later, when a truck driver stops at a gas station, the Marshmallow Man use the chance to steal away his vehicle. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.